No belt. Hook grip. That's a 55 pound plate on the inside. That's 425. Boom. All right, guys. Talk about the deadlift. Woo. Last video was about the trap bar. I just finished pulling 425. Three sets of three. No belt. Hook grip. So as you can see, the hands start to get rocked. But it feels great to challenge yourself. Now, last video spoke about the trap bar deadlift specific to strength and conditioning, training athletes, sports performance. And I said that the, mo the majority of the time we're with the trap bar deadlift. Now, trap bar deadlift might have the high handles, <clears throat> It might be flipped over for the low handles. In addition, we have different trap bars at my gym. So you could see a pretty standard trap bar right there. And then I've got the Intec modular functional trap bars and they are a little bit different. Each one's a little bit different. The front one is the older original one, not so high. And then as you can see in the back, those handles are pretty high. So. The higher the handles, the less we're gonna be straining that back. We're going through a lesser range of motion. It's good to stimulate the nervous system, move some weight, yet not beat up the body through that deeper range of motion. Now, some people might say, hey, whoa, that range of motion is so important. Let's talk about two things. Number one, every program is flawed. Not that you're trying to flaw the program or trying to screw it up, and I talk about this in my certification, go to undergroundstrengthcert.com. You guys will gain access to all the program design stuff. And also one of those bonuses is the seminar Matt Wenning and I did, and we do tons of program design. But if we have that high handle trap bar, especially the newer bar from Intec, it's, we're able to use heavy weight. Maybe that's more suitable in season. I'm not gonna get as sore through that longer range of motion, but now I'm gonna make up for it with other exercises. So I might do a Bulgarian split squat, rear foot elevated split squat. I might do reverse lunges. I might do Cossack squats. I might do lateral lunges. Um, I might do squat jumps and tell the guys, you know, during the warm up, all the way down, where your hamstrings and calves and your butt, you know, go touching together. So not every exercise has to be full range of motion. And there you kind of get the idea and the, or the understanding. You're not trying to flaw the program, but you're understand, understanding that this maybe this area might not be perfect or quote unquote perfect, you know, textbook perfect, but we'll make up for it in other ways. Or maybe, you know, my common answer is it depends. Look, it depends on the time of the year. So now going to the conventional deadlift, which I did right here and I shared a video of my first set of these. These are gonna get you very sore if you're not used to it. And athletes are not used to getting sore. They're not used to being sore and performing. They get a little bit scared. Their soreness or their interpretation of soreness might be, I blew out my back quote unquote. They might say shit like that. Uh, <laughs> confusing a sore lower back for um, a, a back that's injured and now, um, you know, my discs are bulging and I need an x-ray. And look, I'll tell you a funny story. Not so funny, but I, I shared a story. 2007, I was training a basketball player and I remember we did three sets of three RDL with 95 pounds. 95, not 195, not 495, not 95 pounds, a quarter on each side. He did three sets of three. The next day, and he wasn't a new athlete. He had been with us probably three months. He had been doing kettlebell squats, lunges, sleds, back extensions. He was ready for the three by three 95 pound RDL. Message the next morning is like, Zach, I blew out my back. I can't train. I need to take a month off. I'm going to the chiropractor, blah, blah, blah. Then his dad left a voicemail. It sounded like the world was going to end. I called him up. I say, guys, 
chill out. Don't be running around saying you blew out your back. Come to the gym. And I've changed my protocol on how to do like a lower back, I don't wanna call it a prehab rehab, but basically how to get the body moving again. So on YouTube, there's a video or two videos, maybe three, type in uh, Zach Evanesh lower back. And basically we go on our stomach, we do some Spider-Man drills, we roll over on the back, we do some glute bridges, we'll do side and front planks, I'll do pull parts, face pulls, I'll do one arm kettlebell, suitcase carries, I'll do back extension sleds. Um, I'll do that for two or three rounds and all of a sudden, you know, the world is not ending. Now I do some different stuff, I'll do dead bugs, I'll do the bird dog, and I just get them moving again. See, movement is medicine. And back to this conventional deadlift, when I do use it for the athletes, it's in the deep off season, and it's gotta be for our college guys and older. Uh, it's very rare I'm doing it for a high school kid, unless that high school kid has been training with me for a couple of years. And you might say, whoa, that's super conservative. And there are times where I'm conservative, but I'm matching the exercise, not just to their physical readiness, but their emotional readiness. Some kids are tough and they're ready for it and they're not gonna cry when they're sore. Other kids, they don't have the ankle mobility, they don't have the strength, they're just not ready for it physically and or they're not ready for it mentally. And let me tell you, there's plenty of college kids not ready to deadlift with a straight bar. That's the unfortunate truth of the world today. So when you are a performance coach and maybe you have a love for powerlifting, you cannot apply pure powerlifting strategies to athletic development. It's gonna work, but it's not going to be exactly what that athlete needs. Uh, getting stronger is certainly a big piece of the pie, a big piece of the puzzle, but is not the end all be all. That being said, the deadlift is one of the best damn lifts and exercises out there. My lower back was bothering me for quite some time and it started getting better when I started working with my buddy Matt Reynolds starting strength online coaching and he had me deadlifting twice a week. So one day a week is something like this, like a three by three or a two by five and then another day of the week is heavier working up to a heavy five or a heavy triple, maybe a heavy single, then a back offset. And interestingly enough, uh, listening to Marty Gallagher's podcast, him talking about a lot of these lifters from the 60s, 70s, 80s, guys that were setting world records, a lot of them did that in benching, squatting, deadlifting. It was basically power building, power bodybuilding, working up to some heavy lift on that exercise, then backing off and doing different hand placing, different foot placements, different tempo, that stuff worked. So when do I use the conventional deadlift? In the deep off season. And uh, in that deep off season, it may or may not be heavy lifting. It depends on the group. You might think that's a cop-out answer, but that's when you're an expert. That's when you're a pro, when you, when you know that, not, that you know, you're training a football team and the 8 a.m. group is a different mental readiness than the 9 a.m. group. They're both physically the same, but 9 a.m. is maybe not as intense, not as tough, well, they're not gonna handle conventional deadlift. I'll go sumo and trap bar with them. 8 a.m., the guys are tough. I'm gonna tell them, here's what we do. Um, we're not gonna grind on the deadlift. We're always gonna leave a rep in the tank. And my motto with the conventional deadlift is, if you try to kill the deadlift, it will kill you. So food for thought on sports performance with the conventional deadlift. Next video, next time, I'll talk about a little bit more in detail the sumo deadlift for sports performance undergroundstrengthcert.com. The Underground Strength Coach and Sport Performance Certification is up live. It's only available this week. And uh, if you're watching this video down the road, I'll probably be opening up the doors for this every few months. So you wanna make sure you're on my newsletter, go to zachevnesh.com, hit that start here button, get your free training courses and get on the newsletter, baby. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you watching and do me a favor and share this with other people uh, because this ain't no fancy video trickery as you see and no fads, no gimmicks, just speaking some truth bombs on sports performance. I'm out guys, later.